What's going on, guys? My name's Corey Kamori, and welcome to Lyric Breakdowns here on the Breakdown Channel. And in today's video, we will be discussing All Out Life by Slipknot. Released in 2018, All Out Life is the first single off of Slipknot's currently untitled upcoming album. The song is a full-on assault of homogenized, corporate-backed entertainment and the people that make it. Jumping straight into the song, we hear the words, What a world, the horizon, it's coming like a hell-bent killing machine. Can't afford to be the goddamn wreckage. Burn it all again at a million degrees. The opening lyrics set the scene as the music ferociously pummels the listener into submission. The world lead singer Corey Taylor is describing in this opening section is one that is full of commercial artists that are created and churned out by the music industry. All of these artists are created by the same parts or by the same people, and they all sound the same, creating music that appeals to the lowest common denominator. He's stating that he can't become a part of this machine, and maybe to a certain degree he feels like he has started to be pulled into it and been transformed by it. This section seems to be a statement from Corey Taylor and possibly the band as a whole, saying that they're going to break down some of those elements that make them commercial, make them maybe a little more poppy, and they're going to break those elements down, melt them, and create something that is completely new, something that is authentic, and something that retains that classic, earnest vibe that a lot of the early releases of Slipknot had. Moving on through the song, we hear the words, Calling all the adamant, upper-level, undefeated, counterfeit cunts with a reason to fear. Throw away all the meaningless shit that's clinging. The enemy is here. I said, stop, give it to three. I'm gonna show you how to do it if you know what I mean. One by one against, give me the name. All you shiny petty never wills ruined the game. You hold all the keys so the chains shouldn't hold you. I know you heard me, I fucking told you. This section really reinforces what I feel the first section introduced, which is the band is calling out all disingenuous artists who in their perspective perpetuate mediocrity, and meaningless music. And through this song, they are putting them on notice. The other interesting thing that is touched upon in this section of the song is the idea that these artists that have all this money, have all these resources, shouldn't really be held back by those resources. It seems like it's stating that because they have all these resources, they should feel inclined to push themselves artistically more, maybe push their audiences more and not really feel inclined to stay in the safe zone when creating art. Because at the end of the day, art is always about pushing boundaries, maybe within yourself, maybe uh, inside of others, and trying to create something that has some sort of statement. It's really that line, you hold all the keys so the change shouldn't hold you, that really makes me feel like this is what they're saying in this section. Focus less on churning out music so that you can continue to make a profit, and instead focus on making something that is unique, Focus on creating an identity that is all your own and at the same time authentic to who you are. And then we get into the chorus. Old does not mean dead. New does not mean best. No hard feelings. I'm tired of being right about everything I've said. Yours does not mean mine. Kill does not mean die. We are not your kind. No excuses. I challenge you to all out fucking life. While the first section of the song seemed like it was directed at artists that are creating music that is homogenized, that is you know, really mechanical and doesn't have a whole lot of soul in it, this section seems to be focused on the listeners of that music. Corey Taylor is stating that just because something is old does not make it irrelevant. Sometimes in order to progress artistically, personally, or from a societal standpoint, one must revisit the past, uh, appreciate it, learn from it, and then apply those learned concepts into what it is that you're trying to create. There are a lot of artists now that completely disregard music that came before them, and it's okay, in my opinion, if you don't want to go and revisit older music, but there's a lot that can be learned from older music. There's a lot of things that can push your perspective forward as an artist if you revisit older pieces of music. And as the rest of the chorus states, just because something is new and shiny doesn't necessarily make it good, or for that matter, better than what came before. In some cases in modern music, music tends to be 
hollow, tends to be artificial and vain in its delivery and its subject matter. Slipknot is stating that they're not like these artists. They're not like these people. Their music is infused with their passion, their drive, and their experiences in life. They focus on infusing their music with these things as opposed to materialistic subjects. They're really trying to find a way to resonate within the soul of their listeners. And the speaking to the listeners of this music doesn't stop at the chorus. It really hits home in the spoken word section of the song. In this section, we hear the words, We are gathered here today to get it right. Repeat after me. I will not celebrate mediocrity. I will not worship empty shells. I will not listen to worthless noises. I will not subject myself to selected, predictable choices. My time, my attention, my quality should not be bought and sold for convenience's sake, ever. We are not your kind. While I think this section is really directed, for the most part, at artists that perpetuate mediocrity in music, it can also be applied to everyday life. We're at a tipping point in our history where manufactured people, services, communication, and interaction is becoming more prevalent. Social media is not connecting us. It's trying to cram advertising and photoshopped reality down our throats on a daily basis. Politicians are becoming more unhinged and petty in order to divide the populace and in turn make people afraid of each other so they'll just go out and continue to buy stuff and just keep that endless cycle going. When people are concentrated more on having the newest, greatest thing and having segmented, meaningless interactions with each other, as opposed to trying to build lasting, strong relationships and connections, the song as a whole can be taken as a challenge to us, the listener, us, the people. It's a reminder for us to not let our lives become bogged down by emptiness. It is challenging us to fill our lives with passion, with inspiration, and with meaning. But what do you guys think? Did I leave anything out? Do you have anything else to add to this interpretation? Or would you like to just start a conversation about this song? If so, please leave a comment below and let me know what you think. As always, I've been Corey Kamori. Thank you so much, and I will see you guys next time.